Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV, Enforce Tech, 2024 here in Nuremberg, having a great time. Saw this gun over here, we we're talking to our buddies at Mossberg, and they said, man, people will not stop looking at this thing. And they're like, do you know what it is? No, I don't know what it is. Do you know what it is? No, I don't know what it is. I was like, screw it, let's go find out. So I start talking to George. George, tell us all about this bullpup. Well, this is our prototype. It's not the final one, but it's basically close to the production version. It's a little bit clunky right now, mm -hmm. uh, so that has to be fixed. It's a bullpup, precision rifle, hunting rifle, whoever wants to carry it. Um, it's a straight pull system with a very short bolt length. Mm -hmm. The whole system length is basically those eight centimeters, about three inch, plus the magazine length, plus the barrel length. That's mm -hmm. the whole length of the system. Because this back part is the only thing I can make shorter. I cannot change the magazine, I cannot change the barrel. So um, the system is a multi-caliber system works from 50 BMG down to 2 to 3 ramming in one system. We do this because we have two extractors, a left one and a right one, which grabs the case when it jumps out of the magazine. So it's not like you push it out of the magazine and it floats hopefully into the barrel. We grab it, it's aligned with the barrel, so I can put a very small cartridge in a very big 50 BMG type bell blank and the other cool thing about this it's fully ambidextrous it has a charging handle on both sides you can put them where you want on this rail mm -hmm. so you don't have like this typical bullpup thing right. where you have to do it down there it's where your grip is and the other thing is because of the two extractors there's a switch here where you can select before you open it in which direction the case will ex eject very so cool. left and right just by just by that switch just by a switch before you open it up you switch it over so it's like the idea is basically if you like a, a very confined space and you have to shoot against the wall the case will not extract against the wall so you switch it over and it extracts to the other side or you're left-handed so um, it's real straight pull uh, it locks with this tiny little 50 bmg bolt that, that is very tiny. That doesn't break in like three shots? Not yet. <laughs> and we almost killed the barrel. <laughs> so this is a 50 PMG case. It has a patented locking system. The recoil locks are patented. What actually happens is, under pressure, this barrel extension will not try to explode. It will not try to get away from the bolt because of the patented design of the recoil locks, it actually will start to bend. If it bends at all, it will bend towards the bolt. And that basically makes it one solid mass. If this thing fails, it can only fail by ripping off all the recoil locks. How many lugs are on there? 13. How do they lock into place? Whenever you're moving the bolt forward, there's like a, a rotational movement? On this design, there's these two wings, which are part of the treading, actually and they push against the end of the barrel extension. They're like the first part of the treading to lock in. Okay. And then it's kind of like an AR or AK style carrier. Like a rotary bolt. Yeah, like an AR-15, yeah, yeah. like the pin. How difficult is it to change calibers on this? Uh, exactly the same as any other sniper rifle system like uh, FNH Ballista, Desert Tech, what we do, there's a screw here. This screw pushes the upper part into the lower part to get connection to transfer the recoil. If you loosen that screw by about three quarters of a turn maximum, you can take the whole upper part out. So the scope stays with the, with the barrel and you have this whole upper part. And if, then you can take out the barrel like normal like everyone else is doing, or you can just leave it in. Have a second receiver with a second setup, second caliber, and just swap that out. Because those two parts stay together, there's no change in zero right. from that point. The other thing is, the lower part has all the ergonomics. So your ergonomic for shooting, the trigger system, everything stays the same, no matter what caliber you put in. 
no matter what setup you do. So the idea could be for bigger customers, military law enforcement, they buy one lower chassis for each shooter that he sets it up for his ergonomics. It's always the same trigger. And the gunsmiths set up the system for the caliber and just give that out. It doesn't matter if it's given to this chassis or that chassis, it's always the same. So you can give out 308, 223 systems for training. And for mission, you give out a 375 JTAC or a 50 BMG anti-material system and just swap out the system. I hope you can see this. There's this tooth rail here. It's in one centimeter steps. It's on the whole length of the system. So I can take the whole receiver out and move it backward and forward. That allows me to change the magazine well length. So if I have a 50 BMG, maximum magazine size in this system is 160 millimeters. That's a 50 BMG with extra long bullets. And if you have a smaller caliber like this 308 dummy magazine, it's just for show, I move the whole system backwards towards the magazine. So the whole gun gets shorter the shorter the, the right. caliber is. You see, this is why I love coming to Enforce Tech in Iwa. This is much more, I, I have to say, that is the most thorough rundown of a gun that I have received. And that's half, that, that's just the stuff the operator is interested. Because you're the guy who made this gun. And you said to me before we started the camera, you said, oh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm ready to, to do this. But I said, look, you're the guy who made the damn gun. Yes, you're ready. It's my face. <laughs> yeah, it's my no. face. Oh, no, no. Look, a couple of handsome guys right here, in my opinion. Now, last question. Actually, I take that back. I got two questions for you. One, how much does this cost? No one knows. Got it. Okay. Typical answer. <laughs> the, the, the idea was to be in the range of like five to 6,000 euros for the plain gun. Mm -hmm. uh, basically without the barrel because you can basically decide which caliber barrel you want. Um, but right now in Europe, Germany, gas is expensive. Steel and aluminium is expensive. Half of that stuff came from Russia. And labor costs are going up. Right. So right now we are looking at at least 30% more if it's done in Europe. Not even in Germany, but Europe. So we don't know. It's a lot of parts. It's a lot of complex parts to make. The cheaper, the better. You're going to have to forgive me, and this is the last question. I'm from the United States, in particular the southern part of the United States. We're not very smart down there, which is why I need to know how to pronounce the name of this gun. Gungnir. I was going to say that. It's Old Germanic. I wasn't going to say Gungnir at all, but, I, but Gungnir. Gungnir. <laughs> there it is. What a great TFB TV video. A lot of information about guns from somebody who made it and a little bit about economics. Guys, stay tuned. We're bringing you more from Enforce Tech and Iwa. Take care.